Hi there folks, how's it going? So in today's video, we are going to take a look at Lightning FX, which is a fully procedural geometry node based lightning generator. And as far as I can see, there is nothing this can't create. So basically, with this you'll get the power of lightning in the palm of your hand. And the best part, it's little less than 8 bucks. So I'll have the link to this page in the description below if you are interested in getting this. So with all that being said, let's jump right in. So once you have downloaded the zip file, simply extract it wherever you want and copy the location of the file path. And now open up Blender, go over to Edit, Preferences, over to File Paths and click this plus icon and paste the location wherever you have extracted it. And then save Preferences. Now I will go ahead and split the view and change it to the asset browser. Select the asset library that we have just added of lightning effects and I'll make a bit space so as you can see that we've got all the effects right here and this includes the anime one and the realistic one and if I were to go through all of these in this video the video will be probably two to three hours longer which I don't want to do instead I will just show you the basic setup of lightning so I will click and drag the lightning branch so if I go ahead and play the viewport you can see that we have these sparks the lightning and the smoke right here and the smoke is not working properly that's because this works with the active camera and we will set that up later and if i go to rendered mode you can see that we have this nice lightning effect and you will have to go into the compositing tab and add the glare node set it to bloom and increase the size this will make the bloom available and also come right here and change it to always so that the compositing works in the viewport and now how we get to customize this is very simple and easy so if i go over to the modifiers panel you can see that we've got all these modifiers and it's basically a layer based system which is very intuitive and easy to work with so first we have the lightning branch where we have the lightning itself so we have the trigger which enables or disables this we have the position of the start point and the end point of the strike as well as strike point you can animate this however you want and then below this we have distortion so if you want to increase the distortion scale to make it more dynamic you can do that right here including the strength of the distortion same with the distortion 2 and next up we have the speed so this is how fast it will move so every time you change anything here make sure to play it from the beginning so that it takes effect and uh, next up we've got sparks and as you can see the sparks right here we have the start point which is this so if i play this from the beginning you can see that we have zero sparks in the start point and we have sparks in the end so if you don't want in the end you can do that right here and now we have the strike itself you also get a lot of spark customizations for example you want uh, you can change the spawn rate how many sparks you want the angle the size of the sparks the size of the emitter i guess and then we have the lifetime if you are working with physics one then you have the velocity gravity and you can also enable collisions for the objects that are in a collection and same you can use for the kill particles on hit so it's very intuitive and easy to work with and next up we have the smoke and we'll take a look at the smoke a bit later in the next example so let's move on to the meshing and this meshing is actually the lightning strike itself so you can control the maximum thickness of the lightning strike you can change the thickness flow from a to b we have the waviness right here you can see that it starts to get thicker if you change it and we have the constant thickness so it will scale it up in all dimensions uh, that's probably too much next up we have the lightning material and the color including the strength and here we also get spark settings i don't know the reason maybe the reason is because it's in the meshing and the sparks are the mesh so here we have the size randomness for the sparks i have set it too big then we have the spark material and the color same for the velocity and the angle 
and if you just check this box and here you can see that we have enable velocity angle to get intended look so now it's fine so if the angle is not on so it will not look good so both should be on and next up we have the gradient and the gradient will override the color of the sparks and that's because it works just like in real life if you have a spark coming out it will be very bright but then it will slowly turn orange and die so this is what it's doing right here so as the spark ages the color shifts all right so that is it for the basic lighting setup and uh, as i said earlier we will take a look at the smoke a bit later all right now let's move on to another example so for that i will delete this one and here i've got some objects right here in the scene and you cannot see them because we are in the rendered mode and there are no lights so these are the objects and what i am going to do now is i will use the the proximity hit so if i click and drag it into the scene and if i go into rendered mode blade let me just move it up there's nothing happening and that's because we haven't set the collection of the objects we want to interact the lightning strike with so i will select the collection which is this one the objects one and now if i play this you can see that it is interacting with them and it looks amazing especially in cycles because we have ray tracing in the cycles and you can also use ev for that and you know that you have to you know change some settings to get it work but it is what it is all in all it works with both ev and cycles nicely so here we have the initial settings uh, with the strike amount right here and the trigger as well so whenever you want you can just simply animate it and make it show up at the exact point you want we have the spawn amount so how many of the strikes will appear once at a given time so it's five and as you can see that it's five one two three four five perfect and next we have the spawn radius which just changes the radius from where it spawns then we have the spawn rate as well how many you want simultaneously appearing and going and we have the lifetime so if i increase this you can see that it looks unnatural so i think it should be at five yeah that's fine and next we have the proximity distance so if the object is further than two meters it won't strike the object so if you want to include that just increase this and that is how this works and again we got the distortion settings and in the compute type we've got independent and simulated so independent is a bit faster because the distortions are calculated after the strike and the simulated ones calculate everything at once and will be slower so keep that in mind all right and there we have the sparks of course you can go ahead and change however you want them to be and i don't want the sparks in the start so i will turn that off and i can also make it interact with the objects in the collection and so on and next up we have smoke so for that work i will go ahead and add a camera press ctrl alt 0 to snap it to view move it just right here or maybe right here so now i will select the lightning object and i'll go into the smoke one and here we have the strike and the trigger one as well and it triggers based on the strike it is set as a driver and that means it will the smoke will appear right on the spot where the strike happens and when the strike happens you can also override that by deleting the driver and next up we have the spawn rate of the smoke so you can increase it And then you have the size of the smoke. It's very subtle, can't see it properly, but you can see the screen is getting blurrier. All 
I mean, let me just show you. This is the smoke. The tiny bits right here, this is smoke. And you can control everything right here. The smoke color, the smoke transparency. Here are some warnings and information. You have to take a look at and if there are any black areas in the smoke, then you have to increase the transparent bounces in the settings and this is what we have we can increase it and if you don't want smoke strikes you can just simply remove the modifier and it will still work and this is the basic overview of how the lightning effects works in future i will be making a video where i will make thor light lightning effect do not miss out on that one make sure to get subscribed and hit the bell icon so you will have the notification whenever it's released and yeah that's been it let me know what you guys think about lightning effects in the comment section below and of course if you are interested in getting this you can find the link to it in the description below and make sure to check out my previous videos that are appearing on the screen thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one